right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to my TBR for August which is going to be a slightly different reading month. So for August I have created for myself what I'm going to call a clear out TBR, by which I mean in the month of August I'm going to try and read the books on my shelves that I am the least excited about, which may sound really really silly and in a way is a bit silly, but there are plenty of books on my shelves that I haven't read. Some of these are books that are by authors I've read other things by and loved, or they're books that I've got recently that I'm really excited about, books that I know I will get to at some point in the near future. And then there are also a lot of books on my shelves that have been there for a while, that maybe I bought on whim or was given as a gift or got sent a review copy of early on in my channel before I started being much more picky about the books I accepted for review. There are quite a lot of books on my shelves that if I don't make myself read them, we'll just stay there forever. And space is always an issue when you're someone who has a lot of books and likes to have a lot of books. And in general, as I read books, if I don't enjoy them, I give them to the charity shop. But I don't like to give books to a charity shop that I haven't ever read, because I don't know, I might absolutely love them. And even if I think I'm not that fussed about them, they might turn into my favourite book of the year, you just don't know. So I don't like to give books away that I haven't read but I also don't end up reading books that I'm not really excited about, which means the books that I'm not really excited about just end up sitting on my bookshelf for a really, really long time. So I have pulled off my shelves 15 books which I'm not terribly excited to read. Some of these I've had for a really long time, some of these I've acquired a little bit less recently. All of them, I think, have been on my shelves for at least a year, um, some of them considerably longer than that. As I said, there are 15 books, um, not very many of them are very short because I tend to get to the shorter books on my TBR faster, so I don't think I'm actually going to get to all 15 this month, like a lot of them are 400 pages, I'm probably going to get to like 8 to 10, um, but I thought I would try. I'm also going to give myself like complete license to DNF, um, if I'm not enjoying a book, I will give it up and take it to a charity shop. I don't need to keep it. But basically, I just want to get to some of these books that have been on my TV art for a while. In no particular order. Here I have White Teeth by Zadie Smith. I have read one other book by Zadie Smith on beauty, which I studied at university, which I found kind of interesting, but I didn't super love. I got sent this as a review copy when um, Penguin Classic set up their like new Penguins Essential range. I have read the other three books that they sent me, two of which I really enjoyed, one of which I didn't like so much. Um, but this is the longest one, which is why I haven't got to it yet, which often happens with review copies. And it's probably the one I'm the least excited about because, as I said, I didn't super love On Beauty. However, I have heard really good things about Zoe Smith and especially White Teeth, so I would kind of like to give her another try. I believe it tells the story of like several families over several generations, um, particularly focusing on what happens after one man kind of turns his life around after a failed suicide attempt. It sounds interesting um, and I feel like I should give Zadie Smith another chance but it's just one that I know I'm not going to get to on my own because I didn't love the other book I've read by her and because it's not super short. I also have June by Frank Herbert. This is a science fiction classic that I've been interested in reading for a long time, has been on my shelves for a few years and I just haven't got around to reading it and I feel like it's actually one I'll probably enjoy but I just need a little bit of a push to read it. I really enjoy science fiction when I read it but it's not something I read very often at all. Talking of sci-fi, this is A Random Acts of Senseless Violence by Jack Womack. This was quite a whim buy and I don't know very much about it. Basically, I went to a particular Waterstones and happened to run into someone who used to make butcher videos called Jacob Tanner and um, who recommended this to me and so I bought it on the spot and I trust Jacob's recommendations but I don't know very much about this at all and I don't read that much science fiction um, as much as I would like to so I think this is definitely one I've got to try. It is set in the future in a kind of dystopian America I believe and it's just one of those books that I think I'll probably enjoy but I just need a bit of a push to read so going on the TBR for August. This is Pseudo Tooth by Verity Holloway. This was sent to me for review a very long time ago. I'm gonna say about three and a half years ago. Um, as I said, when I started Booktube, I was much less picky about what books I accepted for review, which means there are a few books on this list which I got sent for review a long time ago, and now I wouldn't necessarily accept for review. Because this is like a sort of fantasy, sci-fi, horror book, I think? Which is not the kind of thing I really read. It's about a young woman who starts having like blackouts and seizures, which kind of end up blurring the lines between reality and dream. I actually think this sounds quite interesting, it's just that I need a push to read it because it's not the typical genre that I read, and it's 
been on my shelf for too long now and I need to finally get to it. <laughs> Another book that was sent for me for review around three and a half years ago as well is this. This is An American Decade by Richard Aronovich. This is set in America in the 1930s and it follows a man who moves from Germany to New York. Again, this is one that I think sounds quite interesting and I probably will enjoy, but it's just been on my TBR for so long that I've lost the initial enthusiasm I have when I first accepted it for review. So hopefully I will get to this one this month. This is one of the shorter ones on this list, so I think I will probably actually pick it up in August, but we will see what happens. I don't have a very good track record with picking up any of these books. I also have Out by Natsu Kirino. This is a Japanese book that I heard a lot of brilliant things about, and so bought it at a time when I was buying lots of new Japanese books. But it is a kind of crime thriller, which is not the kind of thing I usually read, which is why I have never got around to picking it up, though it has been on my shelves for a while. I think it follows several young women, what happens when one of them cracks and commits murder and the others kind of help her cover it up. This sounds really interesting. I think the reason I haven't got to it before is it because it's a crime thriller, but we'll see. I have heard a lot of good things, so maybe I will really enjoy it. The next two are books that I got in a book swap with a friend a long time ago. Um, so if I decide not to keep them after this, I will probably ask the friend if she wants them back. Um, but it was several years ago now, I'm gonna say five or six years ago now that um, we swapped various books. This is Last Tango in Aberystwyth by Malcolm Price. This is um, part of a mystery series set in a kind of alternate version of Aberystwyth. I have read another book in the series which I quite liked but didn't love but that was at a time when I was reading less mysteries and I've now grown fonder of mysteries so I think I would actually probably like this more than I did originally so I would like to give this mystery series another chance and see what I think of it. And this is The Vore by B. Catling. I believe this is like a sci-fi fantasy thing and I've heard very good things about it but I know very little about it and like I said I don't read that much science fiction which I think is one of the reasons why I haven't got around to reading this but I have heard good things so hopefully this month will finally be the month where I pick this up. Then I have And the Mountains Echoed by Cala Tosini. This book I bought when I was leaving university five years ago. When I finished my degree I was like oh I don't have to read books that are assigned to me anymore so I'll go and buy some books from the local bookshop and I bought three books and um, I have not read the other two but I haven't read this and actually the other two books I believe were Meeting the English by Kate Clancy and The Luminaries by Eleanor Catherine. Definitely The Luminaries, I'm not 100% certain on Meeting the English and I love those two books, they're two of my favourite books so maybe this will also turn into a favourite book but it's just one of those books that when I bought it I was really excited about and that was five years ago and I, I feel like I should read it now. And it's about two young children, a brother and sister and their lives growing up in Afghanistan. It's by the same person who wrote The Kite Runner which is obviously much more famous. I haven't read that either but I just I remember thinking at the time when I bought this that it sounded magnificent and that I thought I would really love it and I just haven't got to it since. Next I have Death and Mr Pickwick by Stephen Jarvis. You might think this is a weird one to have on the list of books that I'm not super excited about. Basically I always feel a slight amount of trepidation when going into a book that is any form of retelling slash using of a classic and adjusting it in some way. And I love many of books like that, like Longbourn by Joe Baker. I think the thing that I feel slightly nervous about on this is that both characters from Dickens novels and Dickens himself appear as characters and I don't know how I'm gonna feel about that. I think I will probably actually really enjoy it but I think I've been putting it off because I expect when I read this book I'm either going to love it or hate it and it probably won't be somewhere in the middle. However, I should really read this because, you know, it's historical crime fiction set in the early to mid 19th century and Dickens is a character and Mr Pickwick is a character. I probably will enjoy it, but it has been sitting on my shelves for at least three years, so now's the time. Also on the list is History of the Rain by Niall Williams. So, this book was recommended to me by a subscriber a couple of years ago in such magnificent terms that I immediately went out and bought it but I don't really remember much about it and it sat on my shelf for about two and a half years. It follows a woman who is searching for her father and has to like trace back her ancestry to do so. It actually sounds really interesting and just rereading the blurb right now I don't know why I haven't got to this sooner so this might be one of the first ones I pick up in August. This is Sandlands by Rosie Thornton. Now this book came to me in a weird way. I got it for Christmas one year and my mum asked me who it was from and I said well it's from you and she said that she didn't remember buying it for me and she didn't think she intended to give it to me so I don't necessarily know who it was from or who it was intended for or if it was ever intended for me but I have it on my shelf so I guess I'm gonna read it. It's a short story collection set like around the natural landscape of Suffolk that's about all I know about it but I'm meaning to read it for a while so I ought to give it a try. Next I have Autumn by Ali Smith. This I bought um, very soon after it came out on the recommendation of Jen Campbell who absolutely loved it and raved about it on booktube. However since 
buying it I read another book by Ali Smith The Accidental which I didn't love and that was my fourth Ali Smith I think and I really loved how to be both and then I liked some of her short stories and then I really didn't like The Accidental and the way I felt about The Accidental made me feel that if I went back and read how to be both again I wouldn't like it as much as I did originally so I'm just not sure if I'm going to like Autumn because I'm just not sure if Ali Smith's writing style is for me and I think I enjoyed it in How To Both because it was different but then I read it in her other work and was like oh so this is just how you write it felt to me like it served a purpose in How To Both but like it didn't serve the purpose in The Accidental and just got in the way um, and I think that's just partly because I'm not super into really literary experimental writing but I also feel like I ought to give Ali Smith another try and I also know how many people have loved her seasonal quartet so far so autumn's on the list this is like ali smith's last chance if i don't like this i think i probably just don't get on with her writing style and i don't necessarily think i'll read much more by her in the future i then have little nothing by marissa silver this i got in mercedes from mercy's bookish musings moth box that she did a while ago and that was two years ago maybe two and a half years ago i'm not sure it was a while back um, and i just have never got around to reading it partly because i've heard quite mixed things about it since it sounds like it's got a lot of fable and fairy tale influences but even from reading the blurb i find it kind of hard to tell what it's about so we shall see finally i have the soul midwife by ursula benjamin this was given to me by someone at work in my old job who happened to like have it left on their desk because sometimes that happens when you work in publishing and because it is a historical fiction novel set in the victorian period it is quite gothic she thought i would like it however because i didn't buy it myself and i don't know much about it i haven't been driven to pick it up myself however it is set in the victorian period and it does deal with the kind of clash of science and spirituality so i think this is one that i will probably enjoy so there we have it those are 15 books that i want to read but i'm not like super excited about reading and therefore i hope that by making myself read them i will actually really enjoy them actually making this video has made me much more excited about reading quite a lot of those books so i don't think i'm going to get through all 15 of them in august unless i dnf a lot of them because some of them are quite long and also while i do often read sort of 12 to 18 books a month i do listen to lots of audiobooks i do have reading for work and i will be reading my anthony trollope books for the month though i don't think i'm going to be doing any of my other challenges this month so yeah we'll see how i get on with all those books so do let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these if you've loved any of them if there's any you think i should read immediately and you can't believe i've been neglecting for so long and that's it for today thank you very much for watching and i'll be back very soon with another bookish video